good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you for uh, uh, for asking me to give a presentation. And uh, I put my timer on, I think. You you tell me. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> That's uh, very good. Um, Geoenergy in Estonia. I would say that Geoenergy and Estonia has nothing in common. Estonian geologists know that, and Estonian <laughs> people know that as well. Uh, we have a uh, very long history, and um, I would say that 20 years ago we, we had a couple of research papers related to Geoenergy energy. After that, there's really much happening, and uh, I feel myself as a hobby geologist in geoenergy. So uh, probably I am not the right person to, to talk about these things at all, uh, because it's my hobby. Uh, but anyway, uh, why the situation is that bad? Uh, not that bad anymore for the last two years, because we are really moving, and the term geoenergy or mass oils in Estonian is not really really bad one anymore, but uh, geoenergy is not regarded on a, on, a, on a list of main energy sources in Estonia, but I hope it will be changed very, 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 very soon. One thing uh, which could be behind, I'm now making a geological choke, you see this very old uh, geothermal map of Europe, and uh, what, what is the um, problem with that map? Uh, I'm not blaming that the map is uh, responsible, we are not doing anything, but uh, we can have a geological choke, you see Estonia is there, and the map uh, actually counts uh, the temperature at 5 kilometer steps, and it says that you have probably below 60, maybe 60, 70 degrees. And uh, uh, of course, uh, good to mention that Finland is not even on that map, <laughs> so you, you have much worse situation. So, uh, but the uh, time has changed, and I'm happy about that. The, uh, one of these uh, very recent papers trying we are talking about the shallow geoenergy, uh, trying to figure out uh, the very suitable shallow geoenergy uh, usability areas and green color here actually denotes that uh, all this green is very suitable. And they have, uh, it's a list of uh, variables, 14 variables you don't see from uh, the text, but uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, geothermal heat flow, population, land cover, hydrogeology, shallow geology, and so on. Uh, and it puts uh, lots of Europe actually in a, in a green color uh, according to those uh, variables. So we are not so bad. But uh, looking at Estonia also, what we know, we know that we have poor statistics. That's for sure. Uh, but uh, at least something has been... Uh, uh, written down how many uh, ground source heat pumps have been sold during the last uh, less than 20 years, and the number is uh, 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 a couple of tens of thousands, and probably not every pump is counting here, and I assume that every pump which has been sold has been installed in Estonia, but I don't know that. But anyway, what the curve actually means is that it has been rising, then we have a little bump, and now it's rising again. We don't know the, the data for 2021. Maybe it's somewhere, somewhere here, because people are really taking care now uh, about this uh, energy source. And uh, I, I, I thank these uh, uh, prices for electrical power, so it helps a lot to get develop uh, geoenergy. Estonian reality is very simple. Uh, those 20,000 pumps or so are actually uh, mostly using uh, horizontal uh, energy. Uh, we have now developed in Estonia, I, I think we have around maybe uh, a little bit more than 100 installations which are using this uh, open source. And we have um, maybe a few thousand using uh, closed, closed loop systems. And if you look, this is quite a recent report, uh, which actually shows the uh, proportion of uh, 
open loop systems and closed loop systems and these uh, the higher uh, higher columns actually show this uh, it's a closed loop system and very little uh, uh, blue color you can't see even from uh, back back seats uh, actually indicates these uh, open open systems if we compare those energy uh, wells with uh, water wells water is now here in uh, in um, uh, blue uh, color and energy wells are here and you see of course water wells are really uh, the number of uh, drilled water wells is increasing but it's uh, also for uh, energy wells as the number is increasing uh, except 2020 maybe covid has some something to do with that but uh, I would say that uh, it's an open market for uh, uh, Finnish uh, drilling companies because uh, we are very long queues about, uh, uh, for myself, I have a summer cottage and I, I, I wanted to drill a water hole and uh, um, uh, months back I was asking and they said, yeah, 2024 something? Maybe you can fit in uh, 2023. This is open market, uh, and you are welcome, uh, Finnish colleagues, to, to come here and uh, drill a house. Anyway, why I like uh, this um, uh, geopower? Because uh, nowadays, maybe not in Estonia, not in Finland, but in, uh, in Southeast Asia and in many countries, land is precious value. And this is a simple figure where you calculate this gigawatts hours uh, for the square meters. And you see that geothermal has very small number uh, compared to even solar, even wind, not talking about coal and this old-fashioned uh, energy producing uh, things. So that's why I think uh, it's also one of the strong points for uh, geothermal. But where, where do you go in Estonia? So um, as you know now, we have few systems working as open loop or closed loop systems, uh, ATSs, PTSs. Uh, comparing to Sweden, in Sweden, I think as the number is installed systems uh, in the small households are, this number is somewhere 600,000, in Finland 200,000 maybe. So in Estonia we have a couple of, couple of thousands altogether. So we really uh, need to do something. Um, but there is very little information, and that is keeping, uh, keep, keeping us down. The, uh, there is no research in, uh, behind, and uh, even you go to company, and company is asking uh, where, which kind of numbers, do you have any kind of maps? I, I present some maps, what we see um, in uh, south, uh, no, uh, northeastern Estonia, we have uh, uh, quite good temperatures for groundwater at 200, 150 meters. The temperatures are 20, 21 uh, uh, degrees, 10, 12, uh, uh, like, like, like that. Not 21, 21 is uh, at 700 meters. But, uh, so this is, uh, looks like a small anomaly. And uh, we, we know now a little bit about that anomaly. Uh, so this uh, real measurements by the geological survey. Uh, we know that the waters go down, uh, the water temperature is uh, at 200 meters on a, on a top of basement, more or less, is 15 degrees. 15 degrees in Estonian case, it's very, very large and we get very good gradient also, but uh, that gradient 45 degrees per kilometer is not, uh, uh, not very good one. Okay, the other hole, uh, uh, um, what we drilled a couple of years ago, it's 700 meters, we have uh, temperatures measured at the, tap, uh, at the bottom of the hole, uh, we, we get some about uh, 21, 22 degrees. And if you look and you want to calculate these ge geothermal gradients, uh, that gradient is more, more common when we go down. Uh, upper part looks very good, but the real part is, uh, we are talking about between 15, maybe 20 uh, uh, degrees. So what the Finns are, have been doing, they, they have calculated all these uh, nice, uh, uh, nice places. Uh, uh, the large scale, I would say, southern Finland is covered uh, 
was quite large scale map and they can calculate this geothermal power. So when preparing my talk, I was a couple of days ago, I was trying also to, to make uh, calculations. So I took a few drill, drill cores, analyzed seven drill cores across Estonia from north to south, southeast. And uh, uh, oh, thank you. That was wrong one. I have two minutes more. Thank you. But uh, you already know that uh, Estonia is uh, flat, but it's still tilted to the south. And that uh, flat structure actually, uh, um, and this tilt to the south actually makes also the story. And I show, if you put this, um, uh, I, I was comparing uh, 600 uh, meters against 300 meters uh, drill holes. And this is energy. This is uh, direct energy. So this is not a scientific calculation for energy. Say we have around 30 kilowatts. It's a pure direct energy uh, for 600 meters. It, it is enough for a small household with, uh, no, big household with small spa, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, 300 meters whole, you see that it's more or more less, uh, in most of Estonia, it's uh, off of that energy except in a very uh, northern Estonia, where you have to drill at least three holes uh, with 300 meters to get the same energy amount as 600 meters. So geology is really making a story, and, uh, but uh, don't trust this uh, figure so much. It's just an indication. And uh, where we go, uh, I would probably someone of you can read this, but I would say uh, uh, we should look at seawater which is very important kind of carrier of heat. We should use more uh, during a construction, like thermal piles are used already, but there are much more to do. When you uh, build a new house, large house, you can put uh, lots of things under there. And we should start looking for how to store heat. We have in many places uh, kind of excess heat, and that excess heat is not dealt with. And what I suggest for um, uh, officials, uh, we need this uh, first hole, two, two kilometer hole, uh, at least uh, for, for testing. And also for administrators, officials, uh, when we start talking about uh, geothermal, uh, please uh, think about in, in categories of uh, fifth generation of uh, heating and cooling systems, not uh, that one which was 25 years back. And uh, I think I finished. Maybe I, I broke a little bit. Uh, no, 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 you're fine. Thank, thank you, Olvar. <laughs> I'll even allow one question. Who's the lucky person? Nobody, nobody, no, nobody no wants luck to take it. Nobody, no, no, no luck, yes. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat>